Michael Lombardi, former NFL general manager. Friend of RJ Choppy. Uh, and you're about to hate him as well. I will be the only one left that likes Michael Lombardi besides Brian Broaddus. He, I mean, look, he's a JFK uh, assassination, like, uh, super fan. Yes. I appreciate history. I like that about him. Michael Lombardi, who has always killed Kellen Moore, calling him joystick, saying he just wants mm. to coordinate games like he's playing a video game, had this to say. He's keeping score. He's keeping offensive coordinator score on his podcast. And for all those people that killed Mike McCarthy about mm. being a play caller, I mean, at what point do you apologize for that? <laughs> like, at what point do you say, wait a minute, this guy's pretty good? You know, remember all those times where people were saying, well, he killed Aaron Rodgers. He yeah. was the downfall of Aaron Rodgers. Held him yada, back. Yada, yada. He's going to... He's going to kill Dak. You know, you're, you know, Kellen Moore's by far the best coordinator. Why would you let Kellen Moore go? You know, I mean, now, how's that work? Yeah. This is in February. Yeah. This is as soon as it happened. I mean, there were, you know, people were all the, you know, the, the analytical community, all those, you know, all killing this guy he runs the ball. They're going to be too yeah. conservative. They're, they're most aggressive. I mean, they go after it. He's going for the jugular. He knows he's got the matchup. He's got full faith in the quarterback. I mean, everybody says, well, if he doesn't win a playoff game, he's going to get fired. No, he's not. No, he's not. I mean, this is the why would Jerry fire a guy that's running the offense the best he's ever had? Him and Brian Schottenheimer are doing it. Woo! So, Michael Lombardi with the Mike McCarthy praise. And as we're talking about this, uh, ESPN playing our Jerry Jones interview with the year over year offensive improvement. Last year, Cowboys were 27 and a half points a game. This year, 32 and a half. You got to factor in some defensive scores. Uh, yards per game last year, 355. This year, 382. Dax QBR last year, 60. This year, a 75. His touchdown to interception ratio last year, 23 to 15. This year, 28 to 6. So that's Lombardi point one. Then he makes a Patriots comparison with still a question that I also have about this Cowboys team as a Super Bowl threat. I mean, look, you can say a lot of things about the Patriots' inability this year. You know, from Matt Patricia to Bill O'Brien, it was supposed to get better. It didn't. You know, when you look at the changes made in Dallas, it did get better. Mike Solari's done better with the offensive line. Yeah. Brian Schottenheimer's done better with, with Mike McCarthy than Kellen Moore. I mean, there's the it's you can't you can't take it away from it. You really can't. I'm still not sold on Dallas's defense. I think no. Gilmore was sensational last night, but I'm not sold that 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 this defense is going to be able to continue to play. Now, I think the matchup against Buffalo is a good matchup for them because that front will Buffalo's offensive line will have trouble with that front. Dallas has allowed 17 points or fewer in four of the last five games as we're sitting there talking about their defense as well. Michael Lombardi on the GM Shuffle. Something that I was really ticked at myself that we didn't cover last week. It was actually a point from Orlovsky earlier in the week that Jerry reiterated on KMC Friday. The Cowboys defense cannot defend motion right now. We didn't talk about this. That's the kryptonite of the Cowboys right now. So that was Orlovsky last week. Mm before this game, but there was a lot of talk about the Cowboys defense having trouble with motion. Jerry brought that up on his own on Friday. Yeah, I mean, it, they do have some issues with eye candy and things like that, and that's been an issue for them in the oh. past. They get really, one of the big things that you like about Dallas and one of the things that makes their defense as good as it's been the last few years is they're like really fast and really aggressive and... Yeah, if there's some motion at the snap stuff and they start, you know, having undisciplined eyes and running into the wrong fits, it gives them problems. And that's something that's consistently been an issue. But, I, I mean, are they as good as we were talking about earlier in the year when it was like oh, before yeah, Diggs story. got hurt and everything else? Obviously not. Like, they, they're not going to live up to that. But I, 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 I'm not panicking about defense lately like a lot of other people do. I know some people feel like it's a little smoke and mirrors what they've done. But man, I think I, people would probably think I have an overreaction to the defense compared to others. I'm more worried about it than a lot of other people are. I mean, so in the motion situation, Phillies ranks where in in motion? I have no clue where they rank in it. They, I mean, they use they use. Play. They were they they were uh, about a month ago. They were towards the bottom of the league in, All, in 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 usage of motion. Yes, although they do a lot of unique things, right? But motion wise. 
They were towards the bottom. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, look, is, is the is, what is the defense? I, you know, that that stat of 17 points or fewer in in four or five games. Mm-hmm. Um, that's you know, a, that's a lot a of that stat. is it's a great stat. It, it, it is a lot of that though is you know you faced in those games you faced Tommy DeVito and yes. and you know you haven't played the greatest Scrubs. schedule. Um, and you also played you, Philly though, and you didn't give up a touch. Philly down. was at right, and that's so that's good. Oh, that's they good. had three fumbles. Right, the but Cowboys I'm, got the Cowboys got fortunate. They let's, did. Let's not let's, let's not get it twisted. Okay, but for a team that's led the league in takeaways the last two years and is right near the top again, like we do have to give them credit for. It. That's part of their identity and how they stop teams. Yeah, it is. It is three fumbles though. That's not really like their. I mean, credit to them for stripping. You know, it, right. it, it's a skill. You know, to, uh-huh. to me, you know, getting some turnovers is a skill. Some turnovers are luck, but like recovering the fumble on. is a lot of luck. Sure. The ball bounces all kinds of weird ways. Now, yeah. defense, you got three guys around it. Generally, it's going to be yours. Like the Hurts fumble, like the Cowboys had four guys around that ball. They were going to get it. I will say, though, that like on all those fumbles, pretty much, they were like, they were technique fumbles. They were, uh-huh. you're punching. Name of, the, name of the defenses in the league off the top of your head that are better than the Cowboys. Um, oh, Baltimore's better. San Francisco's better. Uh, I, I know they've had some struggles lately, but I think probably Cleveland's better. Okay. Um, those are the ones that spring to mind immediately. Kansas City, they've had a good run. They had a good defense. Yeah, I mean, Kansas City's been good most this year. You probably would so, have to say they're right in the conversation. So with them. all the ones that y'all just brought up lead the league in points per game allowed. San Fran's one; they give up sixteen. Baltimore's two at seventeen. Kansas City seventeen and a half. The Cowboys are fourth at eighteen points a game allowed. Then Minnesota, Buffalo, Pittsburgh, the Jets. The Raiders. Yeah. Now, interesting. Uh, Cleveland's not up there. They've had a couple games where they've just gotten rocked. They've been dominant in some games and then just awful in others. Per play, efficiency, Cowboys are fifth on defense. Cleveland won, Baltimore two, Jets, San Fran, Cowboys. And Minnesota, Pittsburgh, Jacksonville, Kansas City. I, I guess I have. Maybe it's unfair. I, I, I have like a higher expectation for their for their defense. Maybe I should have flushed that as soon as Trayvon got hurt, um, but I, I, I still, I'm still worried. I, I'm still worried, like Michael Lombardi is, about that side of the ball for them. I'm curious, and the, and the whole thing for me has shifted from the beginning of the year to right now. The beginning of the year, I was totally convinced, like McCarthy was, the defense was their only chance to be shut down to win it all, and now it's clearly. Jerry told us yesterday. When Bobby said, "What's the difference? You're ten and three this year, ten and three last year. What's the difference?" He said, "Dak Prescott," and he's absolutely right. So they've had a couple games this year. Dallas has where they they got shelled a little bit. Like Seattle, obviously, was moving the ball as much as they want, put up five touchdowns. San Francisco put up a ton of points. But I was curious. I just wanted to look at it since 17 points was like the stat that they were just throwing up a second ago. Dallas is tied with San Francisco for the most games of allowing 17 points or fewer this year. They have eight. And that's tied with San Francisco at eight. And so, I mean, they've had some days where they've gotten throttled a little bit. And then, I mean, you've got games where, like, Arizona put up 28 on them. But they generally are in the 10 to 20 range in what they allow Mm -hmm. on games. All right, we got NFL Power Rankings at eight. We are going to chop it up here in the Expressway. Also, a Green Day ticket giveaway. We got RJ's NFL overreactions or not. All right, let's get right to it. The Bills are back to being... Super Bowl contenders. No. Overreaction. Okay. That was quick. I, I can't figure them out. They're so they're so talented on both sides of the ball. And I'm gonna dive in on the film on them today and get a better idea of them. But they're so talented on both sides of the ball. They win really impressive games, you know, throughout the season, beating Kansas City the way they did, beating Miami the way they did. That's all very impressive. But then at other times they just lay eggs. Mm-hmm. And so I'll say that. I can't rule out. They're one of a handful of teams I think are capable of winning the Super Bowl. So I'll say not an overreaction. I don't think it's likely. I don't think you can say that they're consistent enough to to bet on it. But I think they're one of a handful of teams who can do so it. So if you look at their last like five games, it it's kind of the definition of an NFL season. The way you judge things looking back on what's good and bad loss. It's psychotic. It's crazy. So you lose at Cincy by six. That doesn't feel terrible. You lose to Denver by two today. That does not feel terrible. That week you lose into Denver. It's like, what are you doing? Well, now look at Denver's defense. It's like shut down. They destroy the Jets, and they lose at Philadelphia by three. We all felt like they could have won that game. 
they beat Kansas City by three. Like that's that's not bad. No, that's not, that's not a bad five game stretch. But they're two and three. But yeah, they're two and three in that stretch. Uh, they're, they, all, they're all close games. They lost to the Patriots. They lost to the Jets. Those are two awful losses. Um, but their their six losses have come by a total of twenty six points. And. 26 is a great number, Chop, because the Buffalo Bills have won four games this year by 26 points or more. Huh, they're bipolar. They're Bill, yeah, they're, yeah. they're Bill Polar. So, so Bill I think polar. they, I think they absolutely are capable of going on a run. Like, I just don't know how consistent they're going to be. But I say not an overreaction because I think they can win one. It's funny. Every metric, they're right there near the top. Like, you know, they're. Overall efficiency numbers like Josh Allen is. is, is, is this is going to be a tough game. Listen, for Dallas l- l- this l- 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 listen to me for all the listen, Dak, Josh listen. Allen people, and y'all only come out of the ground when Josh throws a pick, which I think has been nine straight weeks. Um, of the top 10 quarterback highlights this year, when they run it back, NFL top 10 highlights of quarterbacks, Josh Allen will have four of those plays by himself, maybe five. The, the, the highlights that he puts up are crazy insane. What he did fading on the sideline the oh, other day against KZ. This is what I talked about. This guy arguably has the best arm in the league, the greatest physical ability in the National Football League. And I've been saying it for three years. That's why I've I've, I've I was scared. I uh I I was scared to hold my Josh Allen stock earlier in the year. The top ten highlights, no one else can do what he does yeah. except for Mahomes. He was physically. He was point two yards away from the sideline when he completed that pass, which next gen stats said that's the closest anybody's been to the sideline on a completion in like seven years, but since I think it's since 2020, Josh Allen has five completions where he's a yard or closer to the sideline, and the rest of the NFL has one. Wow. All right, next one. We're sticking with the same theme. Philadelphia, the Eagles are done as Super Bowl contenders. John, t- t- no, t- <laughs> I answer the first one. Go ahead. Um, that would have to assume that they were Super Bowl contenders to begin uh, with. There uh, we go. No, no, no. Uh, look, they're, they've got a, an offense that's incredibly difficult to defend. And if that defense were to click into place, they would be one of the contenders because it's just such a weak field overall. It's San Francisco and everybody. Yeah. That's the NFL right now. And so in that sense, I mean, if somebody picked off San Francisco, they absolutely could be in there. But... No, that defense is one of the worst in the NFL. Like, objectively, it's awful. So, what's your answer? They're, I wouldn't say they're a contender right now, unless the defense changes. Uh, it's an overreaction. Everyone will be hopping back on slowly. They'll be stepping back on after this stretch of crappy games. Will you Will you jump off if Seattle beats them this week? Um, that's, that's, that's a, they're, they're a live dog, Seattle is. I'll reassess. <laughs> I'll be I'll be reassessing. But look, Vegas would say right now Philadelphia is second in the NFC because yeah. when Philly hosts Dallas, if they did in the playoffs, Philly would be a slight favorite. So, yeah. if you think the Cowboys are a favorite, Vegas is going to have Philly as a slight favorite if they have yeah. to go there in the playoffs. And, and I think the answer is And I think the Cowboys are a contender. Right. I think the answer is neither. But like neither would. But Philly Probably, their their style of offense probably travels better, right? Than who? Than the Cowboys. Um, I, I mean, Dallas clearly doesn't play as well on the road. So, I mean, in that sense, I guess. Uh, but. I, I'd also like this. I don't. I don't want to delve into this too much because we got to chop it up. But I'd like to do the bad weather studies in the playoffs and see if that's actually a factor. Still, how much of a factor is that really? Josh Allen throwing in Buffalo in playoff games. What Brady did back in the day, uh, Aaron Rodgers obviously. I think take Tom out of anything. I think take Tom out of all studies. All right, it skews everything. (laughs) 